Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rusty78609, and we're out for a drive this morning here in Brackettville, Texas, about 40 miles or so or less from the Texas Mexico border. We're, we're going to go into the sun for just a few seconds, and then we're going to turn left and take a little drive, and we're going to talk about RVing. Won't that be fun? Why am I talking about RVing? Because I've been full time RVing for 25 plus years, and I've had I don't know, four or five travel trailers, one fifth wheel, and now I've got a Class C motorhome, a 2021 Thor Four Winds a Class C on a Chevy chassis, and it works great for me. <clears throat> but this is downtown Brackettville, Texas. We'll be through it, headed out to a, a little county road where we'll finish our drive. You know, look at that on the windshield, isn't that crap? I tried to get that cleaned up, but it leaves that little stripe there, and then the camera wants to focus on it but enough said about that let's get up here and take a left so we can get out of this sunlight but yeah what I want to start out on is for you RVers whether you're in a travel trailer fifth wheel or a motorhome is preparing to travel getting ready to travel in other words let's say you're camping somewhere and you've been there for five or six days or whatever or you're at home and you're fixing to go on your extended uh, vacation trip <clears throat> you know what are some of the things you might want to consider doing well one is like two days before the trip you know you can get you know some things organized and stuff but the day before uh, if you've got you know outside furniture and stuff that you put in the storage places on your RV hell I'd go ahead and put that away and uh, you know and the mats and all that stuff and then the day that you're gonna go, uh, if you're in a motorhome, it's a little different than a travel trailer or a fifth wheel in that in a motorhome, you're, you're, you gotta kinda keep stuff from rattling around, you know what I mean? And uh, you don't like to, cause you're inside with the stuff. You know, you can hear it banging around. If you're, in a, if you're pulling, pulling your home down the highway, then you don't hear all the crap back there banging and breaking and stuff. And so, yeah, you, you, can, you can do a little pre-packing uh, in the motorhome to keep your dishes and stuff from rattling, and finally you'll figure out how to do that. Now, all of you, whether you're in a travel trailer, fifth wheel, or motorhome, can use the kitchen sink, the bathtub, and the bathroom sink as a place to put those last-minute items, if you know what I mean. And what I've done before uh, and and still do but I don't have that much stuff now and in the class C it's all different I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute but in, when I had the travel trailer and the fifth wheel uh, I would put a towel or two in the bathtub and kind of wrap stuff up that was that might be you know loose and fall off on the floor from the bathroom etc and so that kind of took care of some of it then also don't forget the bed you can put stuff on the bed and uh, yeah, the, in a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, the place that takes the biggest beating is the rear of the unit, the rear of the travel trailer or the fifth wheel, because it's like flipping up and down, like flipping pancakes, you know what I mean? And yeah, it, and it can be brutal back there because, uh, I, I, you know, some of you probably have rear kitchens. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you come out, you get somewhere and your dishes are out on the floor, your refrigerator door is open, you know, because uh, it's rough back there. But in a motorhome, uh, as I've observed for the past year or more since I've had mine, uh, they're riding on an automobile chassis and, it, and there's nothing really getting shaken up that bad, you know. Uh, you, don't, uh, you don't have the mess that you have with a travel trailer or a fifth wheel sometimes. And so, yeah, it's a little bit different. But yeah, but the, the day before, you know, you kind of get organized, and then the day of, the, the, or the, you know, the day that you're gonna uh, travel that morning, uh, try to keep your trip short too. That's a good tip. You know, you know, four, five, six hours driving. That's it. That's what I do. I try to keep my trips around, you know, uh, 250 miles because I, I average about 50 miles, uh, 50 miles an hour, and or less. So I try to keep it 200, 250 miles for traveling, and uh, and in the day of, you know, if, if sometimes the, the night before, if, if I feel like I need to be in a hurry, you know, the next morning that I want to kind of get off in a, in a semi rush, which I usually am not, but uh, 
I'll go ahead and disconnect the sewer hose, the drain, the sewer hose, the drain hose, whatever you call it, and go ahead and flush it out and put it in a bag and put it in the storage place on the RV, and 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 go ahead and disconnect the, uh, the water hose. I always put a little water in my water tank. I usually keep the fresh water tank about a third full, and in my case, that's about 16 gallons because I've got a 50 gallon fresh water tank. But yeah, 10 gallons or so is good, you know, because you might need. For those of you that use the black tank and the whatever, you know, if you need to flush the toilet, you know, that'll give you a, a toilet flush or four or five or six or whatever. And then if you want to wash your hands or whatever, you got some water to do it. And, and it does come in handy. And as far as preparing your tanks, uh, you know, when you're going from spot A to spot B, C, D, and on, on and on, some of it, you know, they make these little things you can drop in your in your uh, black tank and your gray tank that you know that will help or, or, or stuff you can put down the drain that goes into your gray tank uh, that will help deodorize them and and loosen up some of the the stuff you know and and, and I, when i had a travel trailer uh what i would do is i'd put about maybe five gallons or a little less of water in in the tanks with some freshener or something to clean them out while I was driving because when that water is sloshing around in there it's the equivalent of having that tank cleaner thing on the RV hooked up. You know, I mean it really helps clean them out and then when you get to the site where you're going to be hooked up again just open your deals or your to let the water out of your tanks and out goes all that mess and you, if you do that regularly uh, you won't have any problems with your uh, tank. Now, if you if you're, if you're going to park somewhere for an extended period of time, this is just a little tip. Uh, you know, some people you'll notice leave both of their tanks uh, open. You know, they leave both the handles pulled all the way out, uh, including the black tank, of course. Well, if you're just going to be there for a few days, yeah, you probably get away with that. <laughs> but if you're going to be there for a month and you do that. Uh, you can have some problems because see if you're even though you think your RV is perfectly level and it could be the, the black and gray tanks probably are not you know and so there's going to be a, an accumulation in one corner or one area or whatever and and that chunk or whatever it happens to be eventually will break loose and, and plug up your drain tank or your drain thing and so yeah uh, the best thing to do is uh, close your black water tank drain if you're going to be somewhere for an extended period and use those little uh, deodorizer things for your uh, for odor control and or, or you know you, you can you know every four or five days you know you could dump it would probably work you know just so you get all the stuff out you know what I mean because if it if it cakes inside of that black tank you got a mess you know what I mean a big 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 mess so what else uh yeah and then you know of course you know, you know getting ready to go is the exciting part and then the actual tri traveling is nice something else i suggest and, and whether you're by yourself or married got kids whatever doesn't matter is the day before is prepare some uh you know light snacks or light meals you know sandwiches or whatever you know finger food stuff so that you can eat it while you're driving and and uh and, and make the trip a little pleasurable, you know, fix your favorite cup of coffee or tea or whatever, and uh, yeah, have it available so that you can cruise on down the highway, you know, and does that help? Hell yeah, it, it makes the trip more enjoyable, you don't have to stop at, you know, 7-Elevens and gas stations and little places to eat and stuff, you know, because eating out is unhealthy, that's all there is to it, eating out anywhere is unhealthy, and I'm, I'm big on trying to keep your people trying to keep their health, you know. <clears throat> you notice the traffic on this highway, right? We haven't seen a car yet. This is the highway that goes to Rock Springs, Texas, from Brackettville, Texas. And uh, what else can I tell you about uh, RV? There is some difference between preparing the motorhome for travel as opposed to the travel trailers and fifth wheels because you know since you're going to be in the unit with all the stuff that's banging around you have to kind of take a special effort or make a special effort to be sure your glass containers I try to get all plastic but I've got some glass bowls but I put a paper towel between them to keep them from banging or you know rattling 
you can also use that it's a rubberized looking stuff it's cabinet liner stuff you can do that uh, to keep stuff that might make noise from doing making noise I, and I, I, I do line all the cabinet shelves with that stuff to help out and, and another thing I do I, on the inside of my RV as you come in the entry door I have all my keys hanging there well when you're driving down the highway in your motorhome uh, you'll hear this strange little ding ding you know, a little funny little noise it's those damn keys rattling so what I do now is I take all the keys off and I put them on these little snack bags and put them on the dining room table and they'll stay there. Everything in my RV rides okay. I can leave all the stuff on the table. It won't move. I can leave stuff uh, on the shelf in the bathroom. It won't move, you know, because it's on a car or an automobile chassis. And that makes a lot of difference. It rides a lot smoother. Uh, you don't get the, the pancake flipping that you get in, a, in an RV or a fifth wheel. So what else is there to say about RV traveling? Uh, preparation not a whole lot you know it's the usual stuff unhook everything double check have you a checklist uh, I've got two checklists one on the dining room table and the one on the dashboard of my motorhome uh, that not only reminds me what things I should have gotten done but uh, it tells me that my unit is 11 feet high okay so when I'm going down the highway particularly in towns where they've got trees the limbs grow out over the, the streets uh, be careful because you might lose leave your air conditioner in that town and uh, yeah there's a lot of things I've left out here I'm sure but just to just to, just to give you a guide because uh, you know it's, it's, it's a fun thing to do you know, it's actually for me it, it, it's such a it's kind of a rush you know what I mean like an adrenaline rush to, to get everything you know unhooked and of course, I, I'm not going to be using a tow vehicle this time. I'm driving my Chevy Spark, but it's CVT, and you can't tow it all four wheels down. So I'll uh, forget that plan. And uh, you may be getting a little road noise, but I'm only going 30 miles an hour. And the reason I'm going 30 miles an hour is because there is absolutely no traffic, and I am in no damn hurry. All right? And uh, I think this right here... No, I was going to say that might be where they had the Alamo thing, but it's not. <clears throat> anyway, enough said. Yeah, RVing, you know, again, it's the, the day, the rush, the adrenaline rush, of, you know, getting behind the wheel. You got everything put away. You crank it up, pull out, and then realize you forgot to unhook the electric. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. I knew a guy that did that on a fifth wheel. Yeah, he had a, you know, 50 amp. Yeah, he, uh. Yeah, it made a mess right down the side of the fifth wheel. But no, you, you, so I double check. You know, I mean, I'll I'll actually get in the, the motor home and start it up, and then I get out the driver's side, make a complete walk around one way, and then go back around the other way just to double check. Because at my age, I promise you, I can forget things. No kadink. Yeah, this is the entrance to the place where John Wayne spent a lot of money recreating the Alamo. It used to be you could go in there and pay a little fee and go see the old buildings and stuff that he built, but you can't do it anymore. They've got a, a, a deal. Of, a, a deal. I, you might be able to make arrangements to, uh, to go in here, but see, they had, as you'll be able to see right here, they had a little booth there for you paid. Yeah. Well, they got signs here, you know, keep out, warning, uh, under Texas law, chapter, blah, blah, blah. Enough said about that. But ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to be traveling in an RV, a fifth wheel, motorhome, whatever, just go slow, man. That's the whole thing. That's the whole adventure, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, just uh, take small bites you know I mean if you got to go 2,000 miles and you go 250 miles a day that's eight days you know big deal what, what else you got to do you know you're supposed to be out here enjoying yourself and yeah so with that in mind guys make you a checklist those help they help me now they may not help anybody else but they help the hell out of me and uh, yeah particularly you guys in motorhomes because some of you I mean I know class A's that are what 12 13 feet high you know they got to take truck routes to avoid hitting trees and low bridges and stuff. And even some of you guys in those fifth wheels, man, those things stick up in the air like a mountain. So enjoy your RVing. 
but uh, go slow and uh, you know enjoy the hell out of it, man. Life is what it is, man. Enjoy. We're, we're here to enjoy this thing, aren't we? So anyway, with that in mind, just a quickie on uh, RVing. I'm kind of getting back in the RVing mode. I'll be leaving on a trip Sunday morning, going to Marble Falls, which is about 220 miles one way, and I'll be there for a month at a. It's kind of an RV park, but it's 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 just a few spots that are on a ranch, and uh, they don't allow pets. Anyway, but having said that, guys, thumbs up, carpe diem, adios, bye bye. Buy anything you want anytime, but if you think about it, use the link to Amazon products in the description of all of my videos. Why? Doesn't cost you a penny. Just click on the link, go to Amazon, buy whatever you choose, and uh, yeah. And then uh, after that, just uh, stand guard at the door of your mind, because it's your mind. You know, don't let negative crap in. Don't watch the news. You know, keep away from the news. You're fine. And uh, drink plenty of water, stretch, walk. Keep your keep your body healthy. And by God, it ain't too bad. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye.